Hello friends, I welcome you all to cloudsec91.com. I welcome you all to the series Learn Cybersecurity with Ravi. Uh, and uh, this is a series where we are learning Checkpoint Firewall in depth. At a moment, we are at a lecture number two. We have already completed lecture number one in the first half. The lecture number one recap, as we can see, is that we learned three tier architecture. And we also learned about the smart console navigation and then there was one lab in the lecture number one. If you have not um, finished these videos, I will request you all um, just to watch these videos very carefully, make your notes, right? And also look into this lab very carefully and just try to do the lab on your own. The agenda of lecture number two is basically we need to understand the deployment modes and then we need to be able to download the NGX R80 ISO image, which is which is available absolutely free for all users. Okay. Um, so these are the different deployment modes that we have available, uh, which we can use to deploy uh, our checkpoint uh, firewall as well as management station in all different ways. What we need to understand is that why would I go with a standalone deployment? Why would I go with a distributed deployment? Why would I go with a standalone full HA? Why would I go with a bridge mode? And why would I go with the management HA? Each and every mode has, you know, uh, has has different characteristics uh, involved. Each and every mode brings, you know, uh, different commercials as well as cost to you. It has different complexities, right? Standalone deployment being the most simplest is the easiest one. Then we have distributed deployment. But now the question is that when standalone deployment is available where you can download management station as well as gateway on a single hardware appliance or maybe on a single virtual machine. So what is the main reason that why you need to go to the distributed deployment, right? And why, why would I go with the standalone full HA and all that things, you know? So here, um, let's say that if there is an organization, it is a small organization, right? It only has, let's say that, few users. It's just a small company with just one office there. And, uh, you know, they just want to have the perimeter security covered by the checkpoint appliances, okay? I believe, right, they really do not need to invest into distributed deployment just because this is one side which actually needs, uh, you know, firewall. So either they can just deploy, uh, either, you know, they can deploy a single hardware appliance, right? And then they can uh, enable both the roles, the management server, as well as the firewall on that appliance itself, okay? And here we go, right? They will be able to um, utilize the functionalities. Now, what we need to understand here, you know, that, that we need to think that, you know, uh, before you before you choose to deploy the standalone deployment, you really need to do sizing very well. You really need to have a calculation of how many number of users are there in an organization, how much is the total expected throughput, right? The appliance that you have decided, that appliance should be able to match the needs uh, uh, which are uh, which was cal cal which was calculated as a throughput need, okay? So that then the single appliance can be configured either as a management server and plus gateway. Now think about think about a scenario where you have uh, one head office. Okay, this is I will call head office, right? And then they have small other branches as well. Okay, let's say that three branches, including this as well. And now they just need to um, now this they just need to deploy security. Um, across this organization, let, let, let's say that this is one organization called CloudSec91. This is head office in Delhi. This is in uh, Mumbai. This is in Bangalore. And this is in Chennai. <coughs> Mumbai has a capacity of around, let's say that, 50 users, Bangalore has a capacity of 70 users, Chennai has a capacity of maybe 80 users. Here we have 100 users, right? So in this case, right, what we will do, we will go with the distributed deployment. 
one another thing that you need to understand is that the moment you you buy a license for the management server that management server is capable to serve five gateways right so let's say that in this case you will have one firewall here okay you will have one firewall here you have one firewall here you have one firewall here okay so now you just do not need to buy a management station for all different four sites you will just buy a management appliance here okay with this management appliance you will be able to manage this firewall 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 right now this is called distributed deployment just because now we have a management station as well as firewall uh, on a different um, on different workstations the other advantage of distributed deployment is that just because management server will also be a repository of your logs that that, that you know like there is also a log server okay um, firewall being a very crucial device because its main job is just to inspect each and every packet passing through the organization uh, be it in inbound or outbound right and then plus you have additional modules let's say that VPN let's say that AD integration right let's say that proxy if you have all these modules enabled then then let's just try to split the management role from the uh, from the gateway role uh, uh, let you have be a separate management server and then a separate gateway so this is absolutely you know uh, a brilliant brilliant example of distributed deployment where you have one management server and then where you have four gateways all the four gateways are being managed by a single management server so and then you know like uh, in in this management server you will have different policies okay so here you will have different policies so one policy underscore head office you will have a policy underscore mumbai policy underscore bangalore policy underscore Chennai if you try to recap to my lecture number one it's important that you know the secure connectivity which is sick process has to be has to be enabled between uh, head office management station and Mumbai firewall similarly sick has to be here and similarly sick has to be here and then similarly sick has to be here as well okay if the sick process is there then you will be able to manage policies for each and every different firewall you will be able to make rules inside that policy even if you have to make certain changes into those uh, into those rules it's just a matter of opening the policy package uh, adding or deleting the required rule and then just installing the policy um, important part is that installation target here uh, that's again you will learn in some of my uh, next videos coming up we will have different installation targets so that so that right you never make a mistake uh, let's say that the policy for Mumbai should only be installed on the Mumbai gateway by any chance uh, the policy for Mumbai should never be installed on other gateways right so that's called installation target chosen so so this was the basically example of uh, distributed deployment standalone full HA so let's just try to uh, understand here so that's the standalone and then that's a full HA okay so this was this was just a standalone deployment and then there is no HA that means if this appliance has anything if this appliance is sick if this appliance has any kind of hardware issues then you are in a big trouble you will lose both the roles yeah everything is down let's say that right even in this case right what happens is that you have two appliances one is the management so when I say M M is the management this appliance is your dedicated management appliance and this appliance is your dedicated firewall appliance if anything goes to the firewall appliance right then then it's complete production outage okay because HA was not planned over here now look at this model it's a solution to the problems raised in above two scenarios this appliance number one this is appliance number two appliance number one is management station plus firewall 
appliance number two is management station plus firewall right uh, management HA will be configured between these two let's say that if the if 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 this appliance goes down then you have a management as well as firewall configured over here right so you just do not need to worry you have both the roles available as an HA to you okay uh, let us uh, talk about the management HA now the management HA is that let's say that you know you do not want to do the standalone full HA let me let me go back to uh, this one right so this was one management appliance now you bought another management appliance the reason being that we know that right if one management appliance goes down it is absolutely not going to create a production outage because it's just a repository of policies right policies are just being stored as a cold storage here and then these policies are installed on the desired gateways okay um, but then in an organization where there are frequent changes happening where there is a frequent uh, requests coming to either allow or deny or just to modify the rules modify the VPN configuration then you have to have the management HA configured so that if one management HA goes down you really do not need to wait for that either that management HA box to be replaced or the troubleshooting may take a couple of hours so in that case you're thinking about the management HA that if my one if my one management appliance goes down right so then I have another standby appliance which I can use just as a standby and using that management server I will be able to manage my other gateways as I was able to manage with my primary management station right that is called the management HA okay. uh, in the bridge mode uh, that's my next video coming up to you right that is absolutely absolutely wonderful in-depth explanation on bridge mode with its lab as well so probably we'll cover in lecture number three now now let me just tell you right um, how to how you can download uh, the checkpoint ngx r80 iso image it's very simple you just need to open google.com and exactly type the same context just just type down download checkpoint r80.10 fresh install you will you will get a result like this okay just click on that and that's it it will it will it, it will actually give you a big page you just need to scroll it down to to an option where it gives you uh, an option to download that so, so you can see over here um, this was the snip of my own download session the moment you click on download the file actually gets downloaded on your local workstation okay. so I believe that's all guys that that was the purpose of lecture number two was just to make sure that you understand different de deployment modes and then you understand uh, how you can download checkpoint ISO image uh, just follow my next video that is that is lab number two in this lab I will actually do it live right in front of you that how you can download R80 image from the checkpoint.com portal that's all guys have a great day goodbye